it is something else. We go from no pollen at all to gobs of pollen coming in. It's absolutely unreal. This yard, I just moved in this morning and we're going through skimming some brood frames just to boost the week. So anything that is behind us is at least two brood frames. And they found the pollen, I mean, streams of it coming in. And I'm pretty sure I can smell nectar. So those poplars, they're producing. Willows, all types of willows are out, out in bloom. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, we have so much pollen coming in right now that it's all over the grass in front of the colonies here as they're coming in so hard with it. So hard and so heavy. It's like a water bomber coming in. Look at that, I mean. See, they can hardly fly into the entrance. They're so heavy with pollen. What a treat, what a treat. And I've noticed these patties disappearing almost instantly on us. So there is a demand for protein right now. I think last week I was bitching and complaining about the bees pulling off the patties. And here we are, things are sparked back up. Got a message from my package supplier that my 179 packages will be showing up late Thursday night. So I'm gonna head out to his farm and pick them up Friday morning. I'll have the equipment set out on one of our fields out that way all the way along the tree line and around just to spread them out a little bit to help with the drift. Uh, we'll probably shake these packages in Friday night or Friday evening. And I think the weather might even be cooperating with me. I'm not sure because Saturday might be a little bit overcast and one forecast is saying just drizzle and rain which is ideal. So even if I get some in Friday evening, we can do the rest Saturday morning and these colonies can sit and stick to their boxes all day Saturday. So we have some warmth coming afterwards. So there's gonna be no hold bar on these packages coming in as long as those queens are okay. We'll set them, we'll shake the bees in, drop the cages in, Maybe pull the corks the next day or so just to make sure everything gets organized. Um, cross your fingers and let them grow. Six o'clock start. If I'm going to want to move colonies out in the mornings, I'm gonna have to maybe start the day a little bit earlier. This warmth coming this next week, these bees will have the opportunity to get up and fly right on morning's bell. This is going to be good for the growth of these springtime colonies, finally. We're going through equalizing. It's going through this first round of equalizing, just taking the, just skimming the top. These colonies, they're just not big enough to give a lot up yet bird nests are a little bit hard done by. They've gone through one complete full cycle now and they're working on their second and well into their second cycle and now the fresh pollen's coming in these nests are just really sparking up. So now we're starting to see that pollen coming in and these colonies are exploding. With this warmth the cluster is loosening 
so those queens can really push it out. Some of those smaller colonies are looking down into and it's almost like they're going for broke. They're, I mean, they, she's pushing it out as far as, well, it almost seems like she's pushing it past the cluster. But it might actually work because we have some very favorable weather coming. And this is, this is the medicine the doctors ordered. I had a dream last night that we got down to minus 20 over the weekend. I just can't, I just can't shake the shivers from winter off me yet. A little bit of PTSD, I guess. But look at that, the sun, well into the sky already at six o'clock. There is no way on a typical morning, this is kind of a coolish type morning right now. There's no way that the bees will not be flying if I don't hurry the hell up. This is the yard that I plucked out that has been heaviest hit with Nozema. I just kind of sat them down in here so we can provide some aid to them separately. For some reason, this yard took the biggest hit for Nozema. I'm just making assumptions because I'm just watching to see what the hives do. And they've went from like five, six frames of bees right down to one and a half frames of bees, kind of demoralizing but still alive. You can see them flying, loads of pollen coming in. So the best medicine for a sick colony is right from the treetops, and that's what they're getting, and a dose of warmth. So what I'm doing is yesterday, we uh, slipped through two and a half yards. We equalized everything within the yard, and then we actually were able to pull two, like eight frames. I have a, box here and a box in the truck of surplus brood. I was like, ah, I know where to put that. So I'm just working down now through, well, I went through the first four and two of those needed a boost. I mean, two of them were small, but nice, sexy little nest going on. And that is because of the pollen. So if they can hold themselves, I'm gonna let them hold themselves until next round where we can provide them another boost we're gonna have more surplus brood. Right now we're really skinny on brood because the bees are just, just, you know, getting out of the doom and gloom and misery from this last spring. So let us take a peek down into these two colonies and provide them a boost. Very small. So first thing I want to do is just check to make sure that that queen actually has viability. Because I don't want to boost a weak colony. I want to boost something with potential. Bringing in, well it's probably syrup. This colony has gone through a hatch. A little bit of brood. And she's pushing this nest down. There's not a lot of bees in here. You know, there's a lot of years where these would just be shaken into the grass, but the circumstance dictates. So I'll just limp these colonies along and we will reassess all these units and probably requeen them. There's a nice little patch of brood emerging. And she's doing her best, you know. There's not a lot of, like there's not a big variety of different ages of larvae. It's basically all cat brood or eggs. That's all they can muster right now. So what we will do
as we fight to maintain our numbers. We'll give them a frame of brood just dripping of bees. You know? And I don't do this very often. Actually, I don't remember the last time I did this. Femagillin in this pail. So I'm spot treating the worst yards. It'd be this yard and maybe another yard I'll treat for Nozema. So another frame of brood in here I gotta use up. And let's take a look in this hive to see what's cooking. A little bit smaller. Stored syrup. Some brood in this frame. All capped. So we have a patch of cap brood here, and she's pushing down the eggs best she can. Nothing spectacular about this nest. It is, she's, boy, she's sure fighting back. And all this cap brood here, I mean, they pretty much exhausted their capacity right now. There she is. And she's laid way down here. I mean, how are they gonna cover that? So we'll give this colony a chance also. Another brood frame dripping of bees. I needed this, what, three weeks ago. Pale Femagellan, needed messing. Woe is me, what can I say? It's hard showing crap colonies like this, but this is the reality of it. And it's even tougher showing you, me, trying to fix tough colonies like this because they should just be shook in the grass. But the fact of the matter is, I have 50 colonies here with bees in the boxes, which will revive themselves, meaning there won't be 50 boxes in my hot room. What the wax moth will then have honed in on. Then what we'll do this summer, as Carrie makes queens, is we will requeen this entire yard. It's an instant refresh. And hopefully, if we're lucky, and we have enough brood, we can reinforce them with another frame of brood. We should be able to get them up to strength and maybe even some honey off these girls. But if anything, we'll keep them going long enough to switch out that queen, freshen up this yard, and look on to next year.